Topic modeling is one of the central techniques of text mining. And in this video, I'm going to explain what it is and how it works. Hi, my name is Joschkan Sratzade and I am interested in the topics like AI, NLP, deep learning and text mining. First, we need to talk about the phenomenon we try to capture when we do topic modeling. The question here is what a topic is. When we speak about the topic of something, we usually mean the main theme or the main objective of it. A conversation or an article, for example, can have a topic. Usually, intuitively, we give a topic a name, like we do with everything else in life. There are topics like sports, politics, finance. These are pretty general topics. However, a topic can be pretty specific, like certain laws, or certain diseases, or even certain people, celebrities, and so on. So that means pretty everything in life, like concrete or abstract objects, can be a topic. If we formalize it, maybe there are as many topics in the world as there are words, phrases, or notions in languages. Because we usually give things in life a name. Another question is how many topics a conversation or an article or a book for that matter can have. Again, intuitively we can say that these can have more than one topic. This makes sense pretty complicated, but that's enough for philosophy for now. Let's shed a light on the last aspect. Given a piece of text, how we determine its topic. We can read it, tell our opinion that we think the topic of the text piece is, or we can go ahead and analyze the structure of the text and try to get evidence for its topic. Let's see how the topic of a text piece can be defined. Here are two paragraphs, one from the documentation of the Gensim library, which is a good text mining library we also use, and the other text piece is from the Wikipedia, and it's about a plan. To be specific, it's about a gooseberry. Looking at these text pieces, we can make the following observation. If we want to keep things simple, we can say that these two text pieces share some words like the articles or pronouns which are marked in green in our example. However, there are also a bunch of words which are only typical for either of them. Obviously, this difference in words play a huge role in the expression of the topic of these text pieces. This is what makes these two text pieces to stand apart. The pronouns and articles like it or the are shared between these two because these are so-called function words with grammatical meaning and they are common to any text. However, words and phrases like cultivated, moist soil, budding, cutting and air layering can only express a topic like gardening or botany. And words like word embeddings, optimized, algorithms, fall more under the topic of computer science or programming. It would be probably very unusual to have vector embeddings in a text piece about a plant. So far so good. But let's be careful here a little bit. If we think about it, the language is a very powerful and flexible tool. Human beings can use words very flexible in different domains. This gets even more obvious and apparent when we look at our example and see that there are many words in between like ways, highly, value, which could express both topics. But don't give up there soon, because the solution for that problem seems to be probability. That means that some words are more likely to express some topics, but they don't always do it. Ok, let's pull back and rephrase what we have established so far. Conversations, books, articles and many other things in life, like paintings, can have topics. But let's stick to text. Topics can be named like sports, politics in a general way, or they can be named very specifically. 
and we can even go further and define topics as the ability to express an objective with the help of a unique content of words. The question is why we need to go so far. Well, one of the reasons is that it helps a lot indeed if you have formal definition and you can implement a tool which can automatically capture topics in big text collections. The sheer size of information in form of text on internet makes it impossible to read it in any realistic time frame of a lifespan of a human. In fact, people stumbled upon this phenomenon almost from the beginning of computer science, and in the last decades many algorithms and tools were developed. For example, the usage of latent semantic analysis, also called LSA, or its further improvement, latent Drischler allocation, which is shortly called LDA. Meanwhile, there are not only many forms of LDA, but also attempts of integrating the semantics with the help of the New Year's deep learning architecture. But those are a topic for other videos. Another advantage of inferring the topics from the structure of the text lies in the fact that the naming of a text document can not always express what it is about. We may find an article about sports, but when we dig into this document, we might discover that this document is more about the finance of a certain sport, like football, or it's about politics. So, looking into the structure of a text document, you can judge objectively about its content. And by saying that, we get another definition for topics. They are not the naming of a text document. This is known as text categorization. When, for example, one wants to put text documents into categories like sports or politics and so on. It is also not a summarization of text. Text summarization, also meanwhile a well-established part of text mining, creates full sentences out of the text. It's like creating a mini-text out of the big one, and this mini-text tries to carry roughly the same amount of information. So topic modeling seems to be in between. For now again, let's examine the phenomenon more in detail. First, don't be surprised when you use some topic modeling package which implements LDA or some similar algorithm. As a result of your topic modeling, it will give you topics as groups of words which express their respective topic. So in our example, it could give you two groups of words, one consisting from words cultivating, moist, soil, budding, cutting, air layering, and another one consisting of words like vector, embeddings, optimized algorithms, like in this table in the example. Every word has a probability value of belonging to this group or topic. So the basic idea here is that the text documents consist out of topics and the topics consist out of words. It is often also called a generative model where the belief is that if you know the topics of a text document and you have words belonging to these topics, you can create the text document. It is believed or assumed this is how we human beings are generating a piece of text. We have in our mind one or more topics to speak about and then choose the words to express them and put them into a text document. When we do topic modeling, we just reverse engineer this process in order to find the topics. And when probability is applied to this phenomenon, like it is the case for many classical topic modeling algorithms, every topic is present in every text document, and every word is present in every topic. However, we look only at the topics which represent the text document with the highest probabilities, and to the certain number of words in a topic which express that this topic again with the highest probability. Usually, Many topic modeling algorithms let you choose the number of these groups of words, or correctly said, the number of topics. Generally, in this approach, which is also called bag of words, it is not yet completely understood or proven what number of topics for certain text sites needs to be chosen. 
many questions are still open, like how many documents does one need in order to be able optimally model the topics? How many words can optimally be a member of topic in reality? And one of the most famous criticisms of the bag of words approach lies in the fact that it doesn't consider the order of words in the text. That means in this approach, you could absolutely change the order of the sentences or the order of words in the sentences in our text piece about gooseberry, but the algorithms would assign it to exactly the same topic. So the question here is whether the order of words in a text document is important for building topics or not. But this is not clear yet. Being not restricted by the order of the words, this bag of words approach seems to be very flexible on one hand. At the same time, we might lose some information when we don't consider the order of words. So with these words, we come to the conclusion of this video. Topic modeling can be not easy to understand and defining topics like bunch of words belonging together might seem very unintuitive thing to do. However, properly done, it can indeed tell us something about the nature of the text documents contained in a collection. That's also the reason why the field has a rich history and there are some very good algorithms and tools already available to do topic modeling. It's also meanwhile very well established field in the industry. So what's your take on topic modeling? Do you think it's a sensible thing to do to define the topics like bunch of words? What kind of other information could be used in order to find the topics even better? Please feel free to leave your comments below, like the video and smash that subscribe button. I'll catch up in the next video. Bye bye.